Hi, welcome to this tutorial for how to use procedural NPC traffic. Um, this is going to be a uh, single video, but it's going to be chaptered into multiple parts, so you can skip to the parts you need. Um, so with that said, let me go ahead and show you what procedural NPC traffic looks like. So if we click play, I've got the default pawn here. There's also a player car that you can play has um, and drive around and stuff and interact with the traffic. But I'm just doing the uh, the player pawn. Um, but as you can see, we're getting a good FPS. This is in the editor too, so in a standalone, it'll be even more. Uh, but the cars can navigate through traffic procedurally and look around, and there's a highway that they can go through, um, and the highway loops to the other side. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into how this works and how to set it up. So, if you're setting it up, it's actually pretty simple. All you need to do is um, I have it under plugin. Yours is going to be under engine. If you don't see the engine, then go to settings under the blueprint uh, content library and go to show engine content. And then it'll be under, I believe, plugins. And then you'll see procedural NPC traffic uh, uh, content. You'll go there. So um, you'll have, you'll see these two folders. You'll see demo content and necessary content. Um, before we get into those, we need to set some some collision channels for the pathfinding and the uh, the traffic lights. So to do that, go to project settings, go to collision, and I've already set it up. Um, but go ahead and hit new trace channel, and if you name them exactly as they're spelled, it should auto detect it. If you don't, um, you have to manually do that, and I'll show you how to manually do that. But if you just add these in, go to new trace channel, and then call it path points uh, spelt exactly like that set to ignore and then um, I'm, I'm not going to add another one because I already have that and then also traffic light and set that to ignore and then click accept um, you will now have uh, to go into the necessary content go to intersection traffic lights BP traffic light go to stop collider and then check to make sure that the traffic light collision response is there and it's set to block so that the line traces can um, detect it and the cars can stop out of traffic. Okay. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to go to uh, demo content and, I'm sorry, uh, waypoints under necessary content. And then click the waypoint collider, go down until you see tra uh, path points and click that the block. So it can, again, detect it on the trace, okay? And then after that, we need to just make sure that the behavior tree that does the tracing and the player or the AI, I mean, um, can recognize the traces. So if we go here and we click on find traffic path point and we see it says path points, it's already detected it, then we're good. If it doesn't, um, make sure that the path point trace channel is to the path point one. And then on the find stoplight path point, there's another one. There's two. There's a stoplight trace, uh, trace channel, which is the traffic light, and then the path point. Uh, path point. So once you do that, um, you can enter the demo content, which is the demo map here under maps. And if you click play, it should it should work. You should spawn where you are, and the traffic should stop and all of that um, based on the demo content. Now, if you want to add this to your own level, it's pretty simple. Um, all you need to do is go to the necessary content in your level and uh, pull out this BP traffic path and just um, I'm going to delete this because I already have it on this road but make sure you're, in, uh, you're near the middle of the road and then you just drag out of the path points to add to a spline hold alt on your keyboard ALT and then left and then left click and drag like that Okay, and then on the path point, if you go down, you will see, uh, where is it, when you go to BP traffic path, you'll see this E roadside. Um, you'll want to line this up with the directions you want the them to go in the world. So I believe this is the right side of the road, so they'll always look for the right side. Um, so whatever cars are driving on this will recognize this side, but if they, uh, but if 
so they won't go on the left side. So they drive on the right side of traffic. Um, and you can, you know, use right or left side, whichever country you're in, or however you want to design it. Um, the next part is, I'm going to delete that real quick. So the next part is these traffic uh, stop signs, traffic lights. Um, these are under necessary content intersection traffic lights. And if you're using these, make sure you drag one of these managers into your level. Okay, I've already got one in there. You only need one manager. And what that manager does is it sets the, uh, the whether it's green or red on the lights. Um, so they're all synced in this plugin to make it easier for traffic. So that way you don't have backups and stuff. Um, but yeah, so for traffic lights, I'm just using a cube with a material. So this turns green or red with an emissive. Um, if you're using your own mesh, all you gotta do is just change this out to like a stop sign and you know, move it over to the side or wherever. Um, or you don't even actually have to have the stop light in here. So if you're using a stop sign, you can just place them in the world and then just have this stop lighter. Because um, the stop lighter is what really matters. Uh, that's how the cars detect uh, whether to stop or go or wh and when to turn. Okay, so um, yeah, if you're doing a light color or if you want to change this out, just what you probably do, uh, just change this mesh or change the color or whatever you want to do. This mesh doesn't really matter. Um, the way the traffic lights work, again, is it takes the manager and it listens for a delegate on the manager and then it changes the traffic lights. So if the current light index of the manager, which is what gets incremented and decremented, um, is the same as the traffic light direction, which uh, if we go click on these, we can see this one says traffic light direction three, four, one, and two. So if the manager is at one, this will be green. If this if the manager is at two, this will be green. If the manager is at uh, three, this will be green, and so forth. Um, if you go to the manager, I believe there is a max amount on your traffic. I think I said a max amount. Yeah, so max right here. So if you want to have more than four intersections at your um, level, go ahead and change this value right here, the max index, and it'll just sort through it. Um, usually in, in, in my city, uh, traffic stops are four ways, so I just did four. Um, but if you if your map needs more than four ways, or it only needs two ways, or something like that, then you can definitely do that. Um, so yeah, that's basically the traffic light. You just drag it into the world like this, line it up, give it a mesh that you want, like a stop sign or something, and then um, make sure that the traffic light direction, this is which way they'll turn. So like if I have it right here, right, and a car is coming this way, okay and I set it to left, then the car will trace over this way. He'll go this way. If I set it to right, he'll trace this way. He may not detect it on the right because this is a very steep angle, but if you set it to right here, he, he will detect the right. Um, the forward, he'll go forward. The random, he will just do a big sphere trace and pick either this, this, or this. Um, so yeah. And then the roadside on the traffic lights need to be the same as the one on the path. So like, like this one, for example, um, is right side. So I would make this right side. And then I would give it a traffic light direction. Let's just say one. So whenever uh, a car on the right side goes here and they have, uh, and, and the manager is set to one, this will be green and they'll be able to go and turn. Um, if it's red, they'll stop. Now, uh, you, you usually don't put traffic lights where they're going, so like in this direction, um, but that's for examples. Okay, so um, yeah, so we went over how to change the traffic light model, how to set up and how to add to your level. Now what I wanna show you how to do is change the mesh of the traffic um, car. So if we go to the demo content, there's a AI, pond and then sports car. If you go into the sports car, you'll see this car here. Um, on construction script, I'm changing the mesh color. Uh, 
if you can ignore this, um, if the mesh color is something you don't want to change, like you want to set that in the model itself, then feel free to just un just uh, undo this. Or I'm sorry, not there. Uh, under construction script, just unconnect this. But I'm gonna leave it connected for now. Um, so this car is pretty easy to change. All you need to do is just change it like a st uh, like a normal skeletal mesh. So um, I don't have any car models inserted, so there's none that's gonna show up. But if you wanted to, um, you could use like a pack from the market from Fab or something that has cars or your own cars. Just make sure that the rig works with um, the chaos vehicle wheel vehicle movement component. The way that works is um, there are wheel setups, and basically you have bones on your wheels, and those bones rotate to look like they're moving. So you just set those up under here, and then it should recognize the car. Um, so like if we go here, we can see we can see that uh, the where is it the fizz wheel. These are the ones that they're doing, and they're the the bones on the wheel, and they and they rotate. So just make sure your rig for your car is like that. Um, yeah, and then also I'm gonna go over the NPC traffic settings and the loader. So the let's start with the loader because that's easier. Um, the loader basically just loads in and out uh, traffic if they're too far away or too close. So let's say let's say your your car's right here, right? So you're driving around. You don't need something that's gonna be way over here. You don't need them in the level. So the loader, well, if you're over here and you're not looking at it, it'll uh, remove it from the level. But if you go close to it, like you drive over on this road and then you get close, it'll spawn in again. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, the way you do that is you go to set timer by event, and then you um, just pull off, you add the AC NPC traffic loader, and you just do destroy traffic far away. And this is done on your pawn. And I've set it to 15,000. You can do whatever value you want. Um, note that the more you have loaded, the less the performance is going to be. So if you do, if you have like a dense city with a lot of buildings that block line of sight, I recommend setting this to something lower. Um, and then um, in the the way it spawns is in the necessary content. There's a spawner that spawns alongside this, these paths. So these paths right here, they spawn a spawner. And um, in the in here, it spawns traffic near the player. Um, yep, and then the roadside tag is set via that enum on the via this right here, this left side or right side. So the that's set there. Uh, but you probably don't need to worry too much about the spawner as long as you're using the the demo content. Um, the next thing is the traffic settings. So this, uh, this is where the light and pro versions differ. So the light versions does not have headlights, brake lights, uh, the optimizer, and honking. Um, the pro version does. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind when you, when you buy it. If you buy the light version, uh, you'll have the functionality, but you won't have the extra stuff like that. So let's go over this. So the headlights, all you gotta do is just add skeletal sockets to your uh, mesh. So if we go here, you can see I added headlight L to the headlight, headlight R, um, brake light L, brake light R. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, just right click a bone and click add socket and then name it. And from there, um, you can go to the traffic settings and you add the name of the, uh, the socket in there. You click use headlights. You set the intensity, the attenuation radius, um, inverse fall off brightness. If you look at the the hover over the text, it'll give you what it, what each thing does. Um, but what this does is it makes the headlights brighter. If you have this on, then the headlights will fall off more and you'll have to have higher brightness. So I usually just keep this off. Um, the headlights color, brake lights are the same thing, but with brakes. Uh, so you'll have brake light sockets instead of headlight sockets. Um, the vehicle mesh tags, 
you need in order to use the headlight sockets and the optimizer and stuff you need to add this vehicle mesh tag to your mesh so if you go here and you add it in I've already got it but if you just type it in the component will then recognize the mesh and can use it um, the optimization settings so if, if you're gonna use this I recommend having the UCPP tick um, enabled this is an extra optimization but it makes sure that the car will slow down if it gets too fast or um, which is like under vehicle controls or it'll stop if it's gonna crash things like that and then you set the tick rate to something like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 don't go too high otherwise it might uh, they might be crashing into things because they're not updating fast enough but this runs on the timer not tick but timers are essentially like custom ticks so I just called it CPP tick um, the UCPP optimizer is something in pro what this does is it gives you three tiers of um, of optimizations so like you can disable motion blur or enable it defer kinematic bones update the visibility tick update rate optimization skip bounds etc show brake lights show headlights cast light shadows on the headlights or brake lights and then you can set when it'll start and stop this tier and on the stop distance you'll want to set that to the next one to the start of that so if we stop tier one at 2500 then we'll want to start tier two at 2500 um, and yeah, and this is just a way to extra optimize um, stuff. So yeah, um, and then one other thing that's going to help a lot with optimizations at a far distance is the render skeletal mesh is static. This will basically render the car a static mesh. It'll still work, but you won't have like the wheels turning. But if you're far away, that doesn't matter too much. You're not going to see the wheels turning anyways. Um, so I recommend turning that on on the further indexes. You can also just leave it default to what I set here. Um, the vehicle controls, so the turning speed threshold, again, if you hover over each thing, they tell you what they are. But this is um, like what speed when turning should the slowdown, should the braking happen. Same with the angle, how, how much of an angle of the tires should, or the steering should there be before they start slowing down. The brake amount, how much should they brake when they do that. Um, and the vehicle controls, again, they run on the CPP tick. So if you don't have this enabled, these won't work. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, the stop distance, this is how far ahead if something is in front and should stop. The stop trace radius is how big should that trace be for the stop distance. Uh, this prevents crashing, so you definitely want to have this on. The max vehicle speed is the uh, maximum speed. You can set this in blueprint, so if you want to like make like a highway thing where when they like collide over here they speed up you can do that um, and then uh, the max speed braking factor this is if they reach this max speed how much do they break and you really don't need too high for this one because um, they'll, they'll slow down pretty fast if you start braking uh, but I put it at 0 0.2 um, tracing these are for the things that we set up earlier you can debug how they're doing with like for one frame or for duration um, then there's also honking in the pro version. So if they stop, if you allow honking and they stop, like they're, they're stopped and they're not at a traffic light, then you can set a probability for whether they'll honk after five seconds or 10 seconds or whatever you set it to. Um, and in this honk queue, I've just set up three different honks that are randomized um, that I recorded. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much how you set it up. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord, um, and I'll be able to answer them there. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, if you have any ch a questions, just ask on the Discord.